think we'll get moving with the webinar this morning. Um, just so uh, everybody's aware, I'm sure they've gotten the email of what it is, but uh, today's a little different. We're going to kind of switch it up, and we're actually going to do an interview today. Uh, we're going to interview Jeff from Farmers Hardware uh, over in Kentucky, So, and we're going to kind of uh, just ask him some simple questions about his business, um, kind of his backstory, and uh, what he's done to actually grow uh, a 400% increase and actually greater in, in his business. So it would be kind of an interesting topic and I know very valuable since that's the goal for everybody. Um, and uh, just to start off, my name's uh, Michael Horn. Uh, my role here is uh, Paladin Tech Support. Um, I've been with them for going on five years now. And uh, it's a great place to work and uh, we get the opportunities to uh, interact with our customers at the shows and we really have a good time here. And today's the title is a 400% increase in sales. Now that's Kentucky magic. I kind of like that. It's kind of a good play on words there. And uh, this really is applicable to both of our markets. We do hardware and pharmacy. It's kind of what, who we reach out to. So this kind of works for both of them. And uh, again, we're just going to kind of do an interview again from Jeff at Farmers Hardware. Um, um, everyone's going to be in listen mode by default, but if somebody at the end of the presentation wants, um, they're called in, I can unmute them, and if they have any questions or they can type in a question, we can try to field those too. So, and uh, like always, if you miss um, a portion of it because you had to run or you want to see uh, some of your employees want to maybe listen in on it, these will also be available online um, through the Paladin help portal um, and also at Paladin pointofsale.com slash webinars and I'll pull up the slide that shows you how to find that so um, and then you could uh, stream any of our webinars from that location um, and watch them at your convenience so that works pretty well so let's jump uh, right into the, the questions here first off Jeff at Farmers Hardware go ahead and say hi Jeff hey how's it going um, so let's do this. Um, why don't you tell us your story? So uh, who are you, Jeff? Uh, give us a little bit of backstory. Well, uh, local guy here to Russellville, Kentucky, born and raised. Uh, well, not born, but moved here when I was a year old. Uh, so I've lived here all my life. Um, college graduate. Uh, believe it or not, I have a degree in industrial technology, and the first. 10 years of after college, um, I was actually a manufacturing engineer in three different industries. So, uh, you know, a lot of people are like, uh, you have an engineering degree. What are you doing with a hardware store? Well, I love what I do. Uh, very hard worker, very dedicated, highly motivated, love challenges, and I genuinely love coming to work every day. So I gave up the engineering, which really wasn't hard for me because I really didn't like it. <laughs> and uh, yeah. I started work started working part time in the in this particular hardware store when I was a college student. Um, and just couldn't get it out of my system. I really, really enjoyed uh, the retail business, especially in hardware. And just the opportunity came up, uh, the previous owner that I worked for, um, the opportunity came up for me to purchase it, and uh, I did. So here I am. Well, wow, that's pretty cool. Yeah, that's uh, kind of neat with your background there in the manufacturing and the engineering sector of business, but looks like you got the hardware bug pretty young. <laughs> yeah, I did. <laughs> So um, you said you started out working in this store. Um, when did you actually buy it? I started working in it in 1987. Uh, I was a sophomore in college, and uh, I actually bought it and started May 1st of 2000. Okay, uh, May 1st, nice. Nice. So when you bought it, um, what, I mean, if you could remember, what was the state? the store or the business when you took control like oh yeah was I remember <laughs> uh, well the best year uh, the previous owner ever had was in 1996 
uh, I think he did a little over 396,000 in sales, um, which, you know, the previous owner was old school. Uh, you know, everything, you had to make a minimum of 40% profit margin on every item that you sold. Mm. Uh, you know, minimum of 40, and if you could make 50 or 60%, great. Um, and, you know, the, the clientele at the time was primarily just walk-in traffic. Um, you know, you've got some farmers, you've got some do-it-yourselfers, uh, but very little contractor and really no industrial traffic to speak of. So that's the first thing I did was attack that sector. I went after the contractors and then the, the industrial market. Uh, so, like I said, his best year was in 96. I didn't buy it until 2000, so it was in decline. Uh, and, yeah, I don't know if it's just, I think he was probably uh, around 73, 74 years of age when he sold it to me, so maybe he had, you know, lost his motivation and he was just ready to retire and held on to it, you know, years maybe longer than he should have but actually the first time the opportunity came to purchase it I wasn't able to I wasn't ready financially and so I passed on it and then I was scared to death after that that I wouldn't get a second chance but it, it did all work out for me so well that's neat that's neat yeah and it looks like you identified right off the bat some some possibilities to to grow that business and, and in that first year um, what changes did you make um, to help things move in that direction well um, I actually literally went out and knocked on doors uh, you know being in the industry I had a few industrial contacts uh, this is a small community uh, and we have seven fabricating shops here, metal fabricators here in this wow. small area. It's crazy because just 30 miles away from us is a much larger area, uh, metropolitan area, and there's only like two metal fabricators in that city, but we have seven in our small county. So I went out and literally knocked on doors and said, hey, I've purchased Farmers Hardware, uh, you know we're going to, we're going to jump into some industrial supplies. What can I you know provide for you? What are you looking for? Anything I can bid on? Uh, I worked on some contractors. Um, I mean I made a lot of uh, technological changes too. Uh, just a, a funny story when I started, uh, we started with an old rotary dial telephone, uh, no computer, no fax, uh, one cash register. So I came into uh, that situation and we only had about 3,500 square feet and a large part of that was a warehouse that part of the floor was actually dirt. <laughs> so wow. the first thing I did was put in a computer uh, a second cash register and a fax machine and then we uh, also invested in some cordless phones uh, you know after a few months of, of having to actually walk or run to the phone <laughs> to grab a phone call I was like right. we've got to right. here <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I literally went out and knocked on doors. Uh, I listened to people as they came in, you know, items we did not have that people were looking for. Uh, I made a list. I put a lot of these items in stock. Uh, I put a lot more uh, quantity of items in stock. Uh, a good example is uh, drywall joint compound. Uh, the previous owner would keep maybe three or four five-gallon pails of it in stock, and that's all. And mm -hmm. uh, if I started, you know, I'd have more. I'd have like 12 or maybe 
15 or 20 of them at a time and then it got to where we bought it by the pallet and I had to go in and lower prices too. Uh, sure. We started moving items by volume. Uh, you know the days of, of a minimum 40 percent profit margin are long gone. And, uh, they were <laughs> That's right, yeah. And so I changed all that and uh, Orgel actually helped me set all that up to where uh, we set our prices and our profit margins according to the big box stores, the same way they do it. Uh, there's not a Lowe's or Home Depot here, but they're all around us within a radius of 25 miles. You know, they're all around us. So I set everything up according to that, and uh, people started finding out that they could buy the wall drill from me just as cheap or cheaper than they could at a big box store. And uh, you know, it just took it took a little time to get word out, but through advertising, word of mouth, you know, word of mouth really in this area is as good as anything. When people start mm -hmm. talking, hey, I get this power tool at Farmers Hardware for this price, and it's five dollars cheaper than Lowe's. We don't have to drive 30 miles to get it. Uh, we started offering a lot more uh, services. Uh, we started cutting glass. Plexiglass, doing window and screen repair. Um, I remember I bought a, I went to a, an auction. There was a hardware store going out of business. Uh, the first auction I went to was probably within the first year that I had the business, and I bought a glass cutter. And uh, a, it's a wall mount glass cutter, and a glass cutter will run you know, at least 1200 maybe 1500 bucks nowadays. I got this glass cutter for 75 bucks. So, and I taught myself how to cut glass. So, we just started offering a lot more for the customer instead of just walking in and grabbing a couple bolts or screws or a gallon of paint. Hey, we can do this for you now. We can fix your window. We can make a screen. We can, you know, do all this stuff. And that's grown over time. Um, we actually moved relocated the business across the street uh, in 2004 and that was huge for us. Uh, we went from a 3,500 square foot location to 8,000 square feet and that's still not a big location now looking at it but at the time I thought wow what am I going to do with all this space. Uh, you know, I bought all new fixtures, we moved over here and it was like I had you know, a few empty aisles starting out. I was like, what am I going to do with all this space? And now we're like busting at the seams and I need more space. So it's crazy just to watch the business grow. And once, once we moved over here, we offered even more because we had a bigger location and we had more space outside. Uh, you know, we, we sell bagged goods now. We have mulch and landscape rock and all kinds of concrete products like steps and parking bumpers and uh, we have storage buildings and carports that we sell and so we're able to offer a lot more uh, than ever before and another thing that helped us too on traffic was we became a UPS uh, drop-off and shipper drop-off point and we actually ship UPS so that brings in a lot of traffic, and I think a lot of people took notice as to what what all we had and had to offer here. So. Sure, sure. No, that's a great idea. Yeah, no, that's uh, that's interesting. It's you know some of the things that you've identified right off the bat when you took it over, offering more services to me more customer centric. You know, um, one stop shop and uh, really listening to the needs of your community. And I think any store can do that, right? I mean, hardware is hardware, um, but there's a lot of other services that the stores might be able to offer to their communities to be able to grow their business. Like you said, UPS station, that's a great idea. You know, um, it worked out for you. So, um, you know, a customer count, that's what, that's what makes money. You know, uh, margin Sorry. does make you profit. Margin does make you profit. We know this, right? This is business 101. Only when you sell it. Now, you could get the best deal in the world, but it could sit on your shelf for a year, and that's really not doing you any good. But if you could, like you say, maybe do some price matching, lower your prices, work off volume, that's what really starts getting uh, getting some traction and, uh, and uh, you know, focusing yeah. your energy on the customer. Yep. 
Yeah, that's, uh, you know, when I first took over, he had a lot of old inventory that was just sitting there. Um, I mean, he actually had a, a display that had glassware in it and still sold, you know, like ashtrays and, wow. you know, different household items, bowls and, you know, some dishes and uh, cookware. And I was like, we, we've got to get this out of here. <laughs> sure. So sure. I liquidated yeah. a lot of the old merchandise and made room for for items that would move, you know, that you could turn mm -hmm. quickly. So um, it's just it's been a it's been a nice process, uh, and it's still an ongoing process. There's not a week that goes by. I get uh, I get two trucks from Orgel a week, and of course they're my main supplier, but I also buy from others. Um, mm -hmm. But we get trucks a week from Orgel, you know, and used to, we would get one truck a week and we would offload it by hand. Um, when I moved to this new location, first thing I did too was I bought a forklift. Uh, we actually have a dock in the back that we can use and, you know, we get, we get more on one order than we used to in a month when I was at the other location. Wow. Uh, and then we get two orders a week. So it, it's very exciting and rewarding to just see how much it has grown through the years. You know, going back and looking at my numbers last night, it's like, wow, we, we've had an increase in sales every year except for one, and that was 2012. And I really can't explain what happened that year. It's like the year was just off from the beginning. Uh, we sell garden seed in the spring and it's like I think it was an extremely wet spring that year um, we just we just didn't move the spring items like we normally did in the past and we never really recovered from that so sales were down in 2012 but then in 2013 it, it came back with a vengeance I mean we <laughs> we did about a hundred and fifty thousand more in sales for that year than we did in 2012 so so one year of of a decrease in sales you know I'll take that out of 16 years now so absolutely well and every store has its anomalous year you know and sometimes sometimes you can easily find the cause for it sometimes you can't um, and it's, it's something that you mentioned uh, you seem like you put technology in your store not long after you bought it, you recognize the importance or the need for technology or the benefit, you know, um, you know, and moving forward with that um, and using Paladin, you know, how do you, how do you plan on taking your business to the next level with technology? Well, I'm going to tell you, it took a while for me to uh, finally give in to get a point of sale system because <laughs> we just did it last year and started November 1st. Uh, mm -hmm. Uh, a good example is, you know, as far as the way I ordered, I would always use, Orgel has an order sheet where you can actually write down the SKU number and how many you want. So I did that for years, would write down my orders, and my sales rep comes in every week, and she would actually put those items in, or I could fax it into Orgel. Well, I did that for a long time, and then up until about two years ago, and uh, I went to a Cypher Lab, a scanner that Orgo provides, and actually scanned the items in and then just send it in through the phone line to Orgo. Um, so we started doing that, but I actually looked at Paladin a couple years ago, and the first time I looked, I thought, I can't afford that. That's crazy. And then a year later, I looked at it again, and I was like, you know what? I can't afford it. Um, here's what Paladin offers or is doing for me already. Uh, like I said, we just started November 1st. First of all, it's speeding things up tremendously. Um, we did things old school as far as charge accounts that we have. Uh, we actually had a three-part invoice that we would handwrite <laughs> for the customers. And uh, mm -hmm. thing the previous owner did that I just continued and didn't think about it. You know, it's like, well, you know, we can't computerize. We're we're just going to go ahead as far as that goes. And we computerized uh, 
the business as far as uh, use QuickBooks and all the business related stuff is in QuickBooks but as far as computerizing transactions I didn't do it until last year uh, but right. since we have wow it saves a lot of time um, absolutely I put in terminals at first when we first started and it wasn't long after that business is just so good that I'm like we'd, we'd have people standing waiting in line to check out I'm like uh, this is not working here we're gonna have to do something different so I've added a fourth terminal that we started in January so we have four terminals where we can check people out and that's really speeding things up um, I am able to track and keep up with inventory uh, where really before I wasn't um, you know Paladin offers that for me uh, I can actually look in here anytime and generate a report and show you know what I've got in inventory uh, I've got some tweaking still to do on that. Like I said, this is still kind of new, but um, it's actually uh, saving me on not just time, but labor. Um, I never really had a secretary. I've done everything myself except for the charge accounts, and we always did those through QuickBooks. So we would actually take the handwritten invoice and manually input that into QuickBooks. Uh, so that is drastically cut down on man hours as far as that and then every sure. month when we put a statement we would have to take the copies of those handwritten invoices and attach them to the statement and then mail them and that took like several hours because we've got we'll generate probably around 350 statements a month so now that we have Paladin it prints all of that out all we do is thumb through it and fold it and stick it in an envelope and we're done we don't have to pull the invoices it prints them right there with the statement uh, it has cut statement mailing time probably uh, by two-thirds uh, wow. so it's a lot of time um, it's saving like I said labor um, it's just so much easier you know somebody calls and says hey I bought something or we got something back on this date last month um, can you give me another invoice copy or can you tell me what it was and so we can mm -hmm. actually go back and that and print it and we're just like I mean it's just speeding things up so much it's great uh, right. now I wish I'd done it five right. years ago <laughs> yeah well and, and that you know you kind of you touched on the point a little bit of what technology is supposed to do to help you increase your profit you know you mentioned that you had a you know 400 percent increase in sales and actually I think from what you told me is actually even over that um, you know since you took control of the business which has been great I mean that's yeah we were, we were about we were just thirty five thousand dollars short of two million in sales for last year so um, yeah that was my goal along. my goal is Two million in sales, and I thought we were going to do it last year, but we were just short. <laughs> right, right. But to go well, you know, ever a four, you know, three ninety six to now doing mm -hmm. almost a million in sales, yeah, it's huge. So right, and and taking advantage of the technology to get you out of the back office, you know, to get you face to face with your customers more, to you know, figure out ways to increase the traffic um, in your store, customer count. You know that's what's going to grow your business, and I think you started that in the beginning, and you've taken it to where it is now, and now you're going to leverage technology to take you to the next step, which would be, which would be great. I mean, that's what the whole goal is. So, and that's kind of what the, the purpose of this webinar is to talk about how you've, you know, how you've done that in your business, um, some possible ideas that other stores can take a look at, and and how you're, uh, you know, yeah, you've been with Paladin a few months now, um, but how you're already leveraging that uh, the technology to help you take it to the next level so I really appreciate it Jeff um, yeah. I know that our, cu our customers will too and anybody else that listens to the webinar will um, get a lot of uh, good information about it and you know I'd like to see some more of these interview type webinars uh, happen in the future so I'll be something that we'll uh, possibly push for um, especially some s stores that have some niche markets and stuff like that things that they've done to uh, grow their business and be more uh, again customer centric a one-stop shop because I think that's a great idea for a lot of the stores. So, 
anyway, um, that uh, kind of wraps things up this week uh, for the for the webinar. Again, I appreciate Jeff from uh, Farmers Hardware out in Kentucky to take time out of his day to help us out here, and and uh, everybody that uh, tuned in, appreciate it. Again, uh, we're going to have this uh, webinar available. Um, where we uh, where we always post them. If you actually have your palette and open, you just go up to help um, on the top ribbon up there. Um, webinars is actually one of the, the options to look at all of them that we've done. So we try to make uh, the information available to our to our stores because we realize how important that is. So again, thank you everybody for uh, for tuning in. Um, if anybody has any questions, maybe they can uh, raise their hand. Um, I can unmute and uh, we can maybe field some of those. Okay, hold on a second. Looks like John might have. Hey, John, you there? Yes. Yes, I'm here. Hey, John. Yes, I'm here. Can I hear you? Is Justin here? Uh, I am. Hi, oh, John. My name is John. I'm from John and Joe Hardware in New Jersey. And um, we just went to. Uh, for our charge accounts, we also have Paladin, and we want to email all our statements and our receipts, and we do it immediately. At the end of the month, they get email where we're not going to print anything out anymore. Yeah, we, uh, we actually have, uh, I don't know how many, but we have several customers that have chosen the email option. Um, now, I guess it's part of being in Kentucky, but you know, I've got some customers like, no, no, I want the paper. Okay. Like, okay. <laughs> but uh, we have one of our largest industrial customers has the email option. So every time they're in, you know, as soon as the transaction's complete, they get an invoice emailed to them. They have their statement emailed every month, and it's saved. That, that saves us a lot of time. Um, but I have had several choose that. Uh, you know, I wish more would, but we've, you know, we offered it. We actually inserted a letter with everybody's first statement we had here, you know, telling them we offered that. And uh, I had a few advantage, but I'd like to have more do that. Well, we, do, we, we do the same thing. I put a letter in, and I got his email in the house now, and told him we were changing to email. And I think we were not on like um, two accounts from the email, but it's working out really, really. A lot better. The only thing um, we're just waiting for uh, Paladin now to not put out a receipt um, when a customer comes in. That has that. And that might be a question for Paladin. Oh, yeah. Uh, sorry about that. It's a little bit hard to understand you, John. Um, sorry. Are, are, you t are you talking on speaker? Yeah. I don't know if you could hold it up maybe to the, the microphone better. Yeah, yeah. It sounds just a little distorted. Yeah, for some reason. I'm not sure why. But I I know you had a question for me. I just couldn't understand it. Yes. Um, is that any better? Uh, it still sounds a little uh, little distorted. Does it? How's it sound to you, Jeff? Can you hear him clearly? Uh, yeah. It's, no, it's not clear. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Me neither. Okay, I just didn't know if it was just on my end or if it was everybody. Um, I didn't, didn't quite. Um, Where's the microphone? That's a little better. Oh, okay. Um, the question that I have for Paladin was, um, I was telling Jeff that we converted to email our statements and receipts to our charge account customers, but we, uh -huh. still, did, we still get a paper receipt come out. So we charge account customers that are emailed, and I, I'm trying to get away from paper. Oh, I got you. I got you. Um, yeah, we've we always have defaulted to printing a receipt, even if it's an email copy, um, to give to the person. Um, there is a way that you can disable receipts, but it's a global setting. So then you have to hit the print receipt button. Um, you know, at the end of the invoice when that box pops up. But that's something that we can show you. Um, and show you the option, at least gives you the option to to choose to do it or not, you know what I mean? But we can disable, it's what's called automatic receipts at checkout. Um, that is a configurable option, but it's a global option. It's not customer specific, okay? Yeah, but 
that's something we can show you if you call into support. We could definitely uh, help you out with that, John. You know, All right, thank you. you can at least. All right, thank you. I appreciate it. No, thank you. Thanks for calling in. And uh, yeah, it looks like uh, nobody else has any uh, questions. Again, thanks to you, Jeff, for for tuning in, taking time out of your day, and uh, hope uh, hope there, uh, you have a great 2017 as you did a 2016. So, thanks, yeah. Jeff. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care. Bye.